Hey, how's it going? I'm AK Bog, and welcome back to Pros and Cons. I've got uh, my co-host and good friend, Captain1701, with me. I'm on the board, the Prometheus, recently retaken from the Romulans, after the EMH and the EMH2 retook it. Yeah, he, uh, he told me I could pick his bridge this week, and... I love the Prometheus. It's, I knew he would like this. It's probably... It's up there with one of my favorite ships, and that's one of my favorite Voyager episodes of all time. Dude, and I like, love that ship. Can it's I just say, cool. too, man, watching, because we did watch a little TNG, and like, I have not watched TNG Remaster. Like, I watch the episodes to death on VHS Ooh. and on standard deaf televisions <laughs> that were like 19 inches. And dude, like that, just that scene of the Allurians, like, and Time Zero, like, sucking souls, I saw so much more detail than, like, I was, I've got to go through and watch those in high def for sure. And we'll get into the, uh, Shuffle track. Kind of the different, like, the, the Time Zero Guinan stuff here in a little bit, because that was a major. You said the magic word, Guinan. But, I think, do we want to save that for. I don't know, we did talk a lot about Guinan. I was going to say, I'm going to let you lead in. Where do you want to go first? I kind of want to talk about, first off, um, so I think we have crapped on Girardi a lot uh, during this whole series, just being super annoying. Yeah. But I'm wondering if her being sort of assimilated by the Borg has calmed her down. Because she actually was palatable this episode for like... The first time in the entire series to me. Well, and I thought she was getting she's getting a little bit of a heel turn, kind of like, uh, you know, she used she manipulated the queen into helping her, and then she like locked her back up and disappeared into the shadows. So maybe her fake mind probe from from the crazy Romulan Zod Vosh spy in in Starfleet in season one, the mental kind of where she killed. Uh, her boyfriend, uh, Maddox. Maddox. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she felt that a little bit more than. than yeah, she's not quite ready to be chummy with the queen, I guess. Yeah, but I, mean, I felt, for me, when I was watching it, I felt it was an act of cruelty. I felt on like his part. on Girardi's part, like being cruel to the queen, like you know, using her, like saying, "How are you going to like?" gain my trust and ask me to like trust you without trusting me and then she's like okay you know like i'll help you out and then she's like later biatch and it's stupid just called and it's a board queen it's which is dumb i get that plus what's dumb i know i understand the board queen's like one of the main villains in all star trek but the board queen has pretty much saved their ass every single time in this series so far should we call her board queen or uh plot device (laughs) good question I mean, she's going to factor in somewhere. We'll see when it turns around. We, I think we kind of predicted it previously a, yeah. when we said we thought maybe Girardi was actually going to be the new board queen. I think it's definitely now. I'm like 100% For sure. on that, yeah. I, don't, I think it's more than a plot device. I mean, this is like, the, this is, this. they're going into the Borg origin story now. Like, hard, for sure, somehow. I don't know sure. if I like that. Because, you know, I've, I've seen it, I think I told you previously, I've seen probably three origins at least for the Borg, right? Why From, not a fucking fourth? Well, there, none track, of them man. I don't think are real canon either. Because we had, um, in The Return, with uh, that written with William Shatner and whoever else, right? <laughs> Reeves Stevenson or whoever. Um, they were, uh, that was like... The one where it was Vigor had like encountered aliens and like had started the collective. Okay. Do you think Roddenberry though had the idea of the Borg by the time he read, wrote motion picture for Vigor? No. So how can you say it's a Borg? Well, it was like I'm saying they were like well, that was a retroactive like telling well, of their origin. Retcon. Yeah, it was retcon exactly. It was a novel, and uh, they did that in Destiny too. It's basically the same thing too, where it was just a species that encountered. Um, the uh, crew of the Columbia, I believe, after they were like sucked through, like, into, oh, like Voyager style from uh, into the Gamma Quadrant or Delta Quadrant or whatever it was. Yeah, Delta, I guess it would be, huh? Yeah. They crashed on like an icy plane. It was, uh, 
they maybe even turned themselves and started some i can't remember but i did read those books and again i don't know i feel like it's well just like this is so just like quote new metal tried to like corn and shit tried yeah. to create a new metal scene which is not as good as real heavy metal this is new trek which tries to recreate old trek but not as good well yeah so let's just make another borg origin story because apparently why not they we don't, can't stick to any of our canon they don't give a shit about anything that happened in the past destiny they, was supposed to be canon too like they announced that whole book series as if it were canon the book series is garbage then you read yeah you know you read part of it i couldn't finish it it's bad I tried to, I wanted to continue, but the next one after it is like one of the longest and most boring Star Trek books ever mm-hmm. written. And it has like, it's all like the political intrigue of the crime syndicates. Ugh. Like in the right, and I'm like, dude, because it's like setting up this plot to like destroy the Federation with them. Like, I don't care. So like, going back to Picard. Sorry. Let's, let's kind of get all the Let's low, focus, let's focus. Let's get all the low-hanging freight fruit out of the way before we get into our main rant of the show okay you're right um so Girardi and the borg blah 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 she helps them again and Girardi turns her back on him and then you've got rios in the ice detention facility everything is and just bad without like, getting too spicy everything's horrible it's just like a bad character character like characters of like evil characters that I doubt really exist. I don't know. I'm sure there's one dude. I'm sure there's plenty of bad asshole, people. But, like like the running it like oh okay we're gonna go disappear. I do want to see where they're. What do they mean by them disappearing them? I know. I'm curious now. I want to like see. if I'm just saying. So if if that's really happening in real life, and ICE and Homeland Security are saying they're just disappearing yeah. people, then that is a federal crime. And they yeah. should all be detained. But I would I think that would be serious. But like I would think there would be investigation. But I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm yeah. I don't want to get too deep into the the spicy territory just because it's <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know. And then we've got the goofy car chase between angry Dude, the car chase that took like I told you, dude, I told you when I saw the car chase in the trailer, <laughs> like months and months ago. I said, dude, the whole series is going to be in the past, and it's literally going to be Fast no and effects. Furious Star Trek. I think I called it Fast and Furious Star Trek. And then, so if Seven dude. of Nine was not with Raffi, where well, would, would Raffi, Raffi be? be Raffi at this be point? like running around shooting everybody? Would she or? be dead by this point just for Possibly. being a total moron? And being like acting like she's totally cooked and out. I have to say, I have to say, is is seven of nine the only person in this timeline that is the only rational thinking human being of this entire crew? The only one who's trying to even act like she, and she's like, guys, funny. where the fuck are we? We don't. We're four hundred years in the past. Like, chill out. And Raph is like, fuck it. I could have like opened the door by myself, but I'm gonna shoot out the window because it's cooler. Shoot all these people. Seven of nine's like. Why do I have to control this crazy person? And Seven was the one who was like rage, <laughs> rageful last season, right? Right. She I was like, like out of control. Well, she was the one that fired the first shot at the Borg Queen on the ship. And yeah. Then, and so she started that maelstrom of phaser fire. So she was she, like, panicking, and out. Rafi was pretty. Rafi was like all Starfleeted yeah, out. Yeah, now they like totally reversed out of the blue. Like mm. Seven of Nine, all of a sudden, is super calm, and because Elnor. Elnor and Raffi were such great friends that Raffi's just completely. I think we were. Did we watch that Red Letter Media one? I think they were like, "When did they become friends?" They asked. They were like, <laughs> "In when between are, the when seasons? was it that she like right. t- took him under her wing?" Because like I don't remember that from Picard season one, and you watched it way more recently than me. How many times did the two did they meet at the end? Did, I mean, they were like in all the group scenes and stuff, but like I never remembered any specific. Re- I'm gonna have to go because back because in the first season, Elnor and Seven of Nine have more one-on-one moments than Raffi and Elnor ever did. So <sighs> I just hate Raffi, anyways, dude. If they're gonna, if they were gonna go that route, I would figure that Elnor and Seven of Nine would be like a pair, not like a romantic pair, but like you know, Seven of Nine's gonna teach Elnor the ropes or some shit. 
But like they never had right. Like right. he was it made more sense for him to go off the Fenris Rangers, cutting heads off and being all merciless and already changed and trying to be like all Starfleet. Yeah, it was just like super out of the blue, and uh, and so this whole angry Raffi thing's gonna carry on for probably the next seven eight episodes if we got this bullshit show, and then wait wait let me ask you. For the, are you are they going to save El Norris? He going to come back? Yeah, he's going to fucking come back. Of Why? Of course he is. Do, is. do you think they cast him in season three, and that that's course, the only the reason yeah. that they they'll, brought him back? They'll find some nonsense way to bring him back. They always do with these time travel episodes. So if they go back to the future, right? They put him on ice. They didn't bury him. But they go back to the future, okay? What happens to their future selves when they go back? We've entered like time paradox. Now. Sorry, Talk. I'm. I'm just trying to figure out because if he's dead, but they're fine, and then they go back, are they just going to dissipate into their selves and be like, not know it because then they're all there? Are they going to go back and it's or a different just reality from where their time period? But the thing was, with their time period, it was t- everything was fine. But if they go back to a time period where they're not there and they're there, but Elnor's there. The, how are they not doubles of them? But the only reason they are in the past is because Q just decided arbitrarily to send them to a time period that has never existed. When they were encountered the Borg, had Q not been there, all of these ships would have exploded because of, of Picard. Like, well, but when they go back to their time, are they going to time travel back to their time? And they're going to have to. Are, are they going after fixing it? Um, or are they going to get cued back to their time? I don't know yet. Because if they get cued back to their time, I'd accept that. But if they travel back to their time, it presents me with a lot of questions. But the whole basis of this of this season now... I don't get how it works! But I know. So I want to know how it works. The whole basis of this season... I don't even care if they just use Technobabble. I want them to explain it. Good luck with that. But the important, the important thing, the entire basis of them being in this period is pointless. Pointless. It doesn't make any sense because Q is just like, I guess I'm just going to go fuck with Picard again, blah, blah, blah. What's up with Q in this last scene? With like, it's, Who's he talking to? Is he narrating to himself? Can this woman hear him? Is he in like a pocket dimension? But chick. if he's in a pocket dimension not talking to her, because she's reading and laughing at what she's reading. She's not reacting to him talking. So if he's just talking out there, was she like ignoring him? Or is he supposed to be like shielded? But if he's shielded and his powers aren't working, how is he shielded? It's just a dumb way to shoot it. They couldn't have shot him further away (coughs) from her? I don't know. They shouldn't even be in this position to begin with because it's pointless. Why is his powers not working? Well, like, what does Picard have to even atone with in this fake timeline? Well, there... If they're Earth not is... in the fake timeline anymore. They're in the real time trying to prevent the fake timeline. But why? What's the point of that? Their real timeline is fucking fine. Their real timeline is fine. Why do they need to go a- account for a. He got blown separate... up in their real timeline with the Borg. Oh no. Shit happened. With Doctor, Doctor Who Borg. Shows... Doctor Who Girardi Borg. Then I guess. What... That's, well, that's her name for me now. Then on, Picard man. should have Doctor the obituary Who written for him. Girardi and he should be. Borg. D D W D W uh J B D W J B So D-W-J-B. so then Q rescued them from blowing themselves up by throwing them into the mirror universe timeline to fix some random bullshit that doesn't even matter in their normal timeline because in their normal timeline the federation is fine I don't know why Q put them into the weird, like, mirror dimension. It's not even the confederate dimension. I was thinking about this the last, like... The confederate dimension, sorry. Yeah, I was thinking about this, like, the last three episodes. And I'm just like, why... Normally Q, when he sends you back somewhere, there's a point to it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if he cues them back to their dimension and timeline, like, okay, I guess. But what's the point of doing all this? Right. There's no point except for... Um... Is it going to tie in with Discovery or not? What do you think? I think yes. I think it's going to cross over with the, the last season. Of the, isn't Did they do a season four? Is that the last season of Discovery? I don't know. I stopped watching that show. 
Maybe they're not going to cross over. I thought maybe they're they were. They're not going to cross over. It'd be too expensive, and we've already talked about how the show's skipping. It would through. almost seem like it would be cheaper, though, because they could just warp one of the casts onto the other timeline and just use those sets. Uh, do you really want to see Burnham and Picard blow no, each other for like 20 minutes? I don't really want to see that. Yeah, I don't either. I want to see more Picard. This is not my Picard, dude. We watched, like... All right, let's explain this real quick because we're about to get into the juiciest. Dumb I was gonna say, is there it. anything else that we want to talk about or cover? No, but I think so. When you last see, I do want to point out that I do have a prediction that because Raffi and Seven of Nine beam to like this little mountaintop, and they just happen to get there right before Raffi's ice bus rolls by, and I think Raffi's gonna freak out and just phaser everyone, and they're gonna save Rios. Do you think she'll use stun or accidentally use She's going to kill them kill, all. Or do you think nuts. she'll use kill on purpose? She's going to kill because she's angry. And like, I'm just going to be angry for seven You'll episodes. You'll be like, why did you vaporize them? Right. And then and the, she'll be like, I thought it was on stun. Right. Some bullshit answer. And then the will like. Seven was already like, what are you doing with a phaser? <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. So we want to get into it now? Yeah, this is like the worst part of the episode. Well, here's the thing, because we're going to talk about Guinan. And this this hits to one of the worst parts of New Trek, that they have either never watched the full canon, or they've watched like the top ten episodes and then forgotten about them. Or they just don't give a shit. Like... I'm not, I don't, you can't just like Well, let's talk, up. let's talk about, because we went back and we actually watched Time Zero because we were like, we were just curious and we wanted to see, and I'll tell you, flipping through that episode for 10 minutes well, let's talk about was a lot more fun than any of the Picard I've seen, yeah. and that's my Picard. This Picard, I don't recognize at all, at all. Well, what sets it up is Picard like somehow manages to like perfectly land at 10 forward lane in Los Angeles, which I don't even know if it's real. So he goes in and he runs into young Guinan. Young Which, okay, Guinan. I thought it was 10 forward was dumb in the future. but So I guess she owned 10 forward and then named 10 forward on deck 10 in the forward section, 10 forward after a bar on Earth when she was running with Picard. And then she went back to Earth after the Enterprise D was destroyed, back to her 10 forward bar. Apparently. That bar's been That's there for stupid. 500 years. That's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's really dumb. And why, dude, what are the chances that this... And then, miraculously, doesn't remember any of it. Yeah, because, like, well, we're not even there because we went and we watched Time Zero and she definitely met Picard. And I think... In 1899 or something. Like, she's known Data for a while in this episode at this point. She's been helping him out and she knows he's from the future. We don't even run into Guinan until the second episode of the Time Zero. Well, I think she might have been in the first a little bit and we just missed one of those scenes. We have, she's in it, but we, she doesn't meet Picard until deep into the second episode. Yeah. And, like, the scene is, um, she's there in a room, and Data comes to enter, and Picard's with him, and she kind of stops in a little bit, and is kind of a little taken back, like, who's this, you know? And she goes, do I know you? And he, or she says, uh, do you know me? And he says, oh, yes, very well. Uh, and she goes, do I know you? And he says, not yet. Something like that, right? Right. So that indicates quite clearly that that seems to be the first time Guinan meets Picard. Picard already knows her at this point because he's from the future, right? But at that point, she's like, oh, okay. She right? accepts it. Yeah, she seems like she's a you know normal Guinan. Uh, this new Guinan doesn't appear to remember Picard visually, which, again... Picard really doesn't look that... I know he's a lot older in this new series. But you would remember. But he doesn't look that different. He literally is still bald and literally the same. And if you met time travelers, you'd remember what they looked like. Right. She would... She would. She definitely would remember the experience. And they play it off like she doesn't know him until he says his name. But then she's like, how oh, helpful is that supposed to be when she realizes it's the Picard she met from a hundred years ago. And do they ever talk about, like, she had that time sickness? Yeah, right, where, like, uh, she heard the words from her future self or whatever. 
Like, I don't remember that happening in TNG. Um, you know? Like, she... They've always made her powers and whatever kind of weird and unusual, so whatever. I'm okay with that. I, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, I was kind of taken aback by the fact that they cast somebody young and different than Guinan because they already, like... they Going back to the, the first episode, when they make the same joke with Q and Guinan that they're, they've chosen to age up, whatever, that... All right, but the fact that they have young Guinan and they've cast her differently really kind of just drives me insane right now. It's so dumb. And um, I feel like they would have been a lot better served had they just taken a lot of footage of Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost and TNG and whatever else, Sister Act, you how know. How many movies do you think she was in? She was, she's in a lot, dude. And I, then how many I epi- watched a lot. I love Whoopi growing up, man. You how know? many episodes of TNG do you think she's in? Like 30? She's in at least 15 or 20 right. minimum. She's got to be in a lot. She's in a fair number. As well as Generations, yeah. the movie. And so you would think that they would be able to run that and be able to pull off a pretty good deep fake with uh, the right actress doing the body double work and with Whoopi doing the voice acting. And it would have made so much more sense because it would have taken away one of the dumb jokes of people aging up. They could have made that one and that would have been fine with Q. And then they took that away and had her, you know, doing the body double, you know, deep fake thing in the future. Oh yeah, I'm in a worry, I'm not aging, right? And then they go back in the past and done the same thing. It's just a few scenes. You know what I mean? I think that they wanted to be more dynamic with her in the past, but I feel like they probably, if they got the right deepfake person, they probably could have pulled it off really well. And that would have really like made it the continuity and the connectivity, I think, a lot better. And everyone's like, you can't do deepfake in this. It would work really well with Disney. And it just would have served the story a lot better here than making some dumb joke twice. Right. And then also recasting. And it, I, that, I don't know. You know, I know the entire reason that they're in the past is so that they don't have to do budget again with a 40 minute long car chase. They're like, how can we eat up time and not spend money? And so, deep fakes, probably expensive, but they should have put a little bit of money in that. And I bet it would have, it would have, for me, it would have, it would have been a lot better. And maybe. Um, they, if they had brought in Guinan, uh, uh, actual Whoopi Goldberg to do the voice for young Guinan, she would have been like, whoa, 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 what? Remember, you know, Guinan already met Picard. Maybe she would have remembered doing the episode and could have corrected him, right? Or maybe she could have um, been like, why would I be pulling a shotgun on Picard? Which is the most outrageous and idiotic uh, moment, I think, from the episode. I don't know. And then she doesn't even she doesn't even like recognize him until he says his name. Yeah. And so does wait, is Luna actually her dog and it lives forever and Picard gets it and starts calling it number 1 or does he go get a basic copy of her dog and name it number 1 in the future? But I guess he had number 1 last season. Yeah, he does. So and then the, like, Uncle Drew guy or whatever comes and picks it up. Uncle. Don't get it, dude. What's with the dog, bro? That scene was weird. That scene was it. just so disjointed. It's, is it just trying to show she's leaving? or I don't know. But then... Uh, man. So Guinan... Throughout, I don't like New Trek at all. Throughout, I don't like it, Tom. Guinan throughout TNG is always probably the most positive character. I know. Every time. And in this one, she's just like... Oh, she's bitter. literally... Earth cr- sucks. All these crying humans are terrible. Crying because they're ruining the planet. But I'm just like... <sighs> Them polar bears. They're not even like... These characters are just surface level... I feel like if I... of what we know these characters are to breed. I feel like if I cast somebody to play an established character in a series, someone that was iconic... Guinan was iconic. People that don't even She's like that basic. aren't Star Trek fans still know the character from seeing the episodes here or there when they were growing up. She's Picard's muse, like the entire series. And she's always a source of wisdom, right? And of um, yeah, you know. I feel like anytime Picard needed actual like therapy, 
He never went to Troy, because she'd always like feel his bald head and ask him what's wrong. He would go to Guinan, and she'd talk him through <laughs> all of his, I feel you're anxious, or whatever, but she would, he would always go to 10 forward, talk to Guinan, Guinan would talk him off the cliff, and he'd be fine. Give him some perspective. Right. And this guy was like, "This isn't real." I don't even know who the fuck you are, like Picard, like blah blah blah. And then he's just like, "I'm John Luke." I'm trying to get like, out of here. You then she me. just like matrixed into this, like, "Oh, well, jump in my car and I'll just take you to the thing you want." This and I don't get that. Is that supposed to be her again, recognizing him from the past adventure? But she visually is like inept. They never explained it. I don't think they did. Had they explained it, it would I was all yelling and ranting part of the time, so I feel like I could have missed that, but I don't think I did. I don't think so either, because... We did try and pause when we got really upset and had to take a break to just, like, deconstruct, look at each other and be like, are we seeing this happen? Is this happening? What's happening right here? We both were like... We both were like, this shit happened in Time's Arrow. 120 years before. Dude. How did they just forget? And, like, just the two scenes of Picard we saw in that were, like, good, man. It made me remember how much I really like Picard and made me realize just how much I dislike new Picard. New card. Robot. Can't call him new card from now. Robot Picard. Pick bot? At least they didn't point out that Picard he was a... Picard bot. By the way, speaking of, like, robot Picard, so with his new... <sighs> With his new robot body, he doesn't get cold because I guess Gerardi, she's a human, right? And they, they stumble into his chateau. And he's all sitting like, there with a the fire. Is he trying to warm up? Is he doing it just for her? I, is like, he pretending to well, be cold? Well, he had cold, his so sleeves she, up too. And she's did. like under a wool blanket, like so shivering. I wonder if they're consciously trying to do that or if it just, I guess they must have. Because she's like, oh my god, I'm so cold. And he's just like, I'm now a robot, so I have no feeling about I cold. I feel like they almost would like forget that and like make him be like, oh, I'm so cold too. Or maybe it'd be, maybe they'd be like, we made the robot so the robot would feel cold. The robot feels cold, Tom. I am Picard. I am a robot. I feel cold now. The Picard bot is cold. Vibrating, shivery. What if, what if during this season, like, one of his implants or something, like, blows out and they're stuck in the 20, 2024 and they can't fix I was robot hoping. Picard? I was hoping this season something would go down and we would see Picard all of a sudden be like, pull out his data powers and be like, I am a prositronic data robot now. And boop, 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 boop. Everybody, he'd be like, sorry guys, I know it's weird to see me do that, but it was the only thing that could happen right there. And everyone be like, Ugh, I forgot he was a robot until right now. So are we... Soulless robot. Are we under the agreement that this show is now a hot mess? Um, I'm, are you confused? Are you, who's not in agreement? I I I I kind of thought it was since I, like well, the yeah. first season. Yeah, and now it has entered full hot mess territory. You were pretty optimistic the first two episodes, and we have been trying to be positive. I'm trying to think of things that I like this episode. Not much. I do like the Borg Queen. I, I like don't. the Borg Queen. I like. She's got that same, like... I like who they picked, and I like it, but I don't like the writing. I don't like her being, like, all I'm, a poetry. That doesn't seem very Borg-like to she me. She was like that in, in First Contact. Uh, yeah. And she was a lot like that in Voyager. Mm, eh. I do... I think she's she's doing, She's doing honor to the previous versions of the character, and it's... I would say it's a true-to-character performance. I'm just... I think the Borg yeah, Queen... I didn't like her little rant... But you're right. She was totally like that with Data, and you're totally right. So I'm gonna Jane retract it. You're right. You're right. I think um, honestly, like I, I like those scenes more than anything else in this. She's episode. got the best makeup, and Make-ups. makeup effects sick. are sick. They're very oh, well done. Uh, they figure out with first contact. And I'm glad they kept that. It makes it, the Borg are freaky, man. I don't agree with the main. I don't like the contemporary idea. A lot of Star Trek fans hold about Voyager ruining the Borg and making them soft. I don't like. I that. thought they. Was I don't fine. think it's true. No, I thought the they were they were always taken as a credible threat. There still are. Um and like well you know depends because they destroyed the Borg network on their way home. 
But this Borg ship could like take this Borg queen can take over the ship in any second. Well, I'm just we're like. talking Voyager, you know, right. like um, supposedly this Borg queen, right, uh, is in the from the other dimension, and the Borg queen from that dimension, right, is um, well, the only, last of her kind. They've been the, uh, destroyed and everything, well, right? It seems like the Borg queen is a nebulous concept too. Dude, I don't even... I, here's the thing, man. They have a really good Borg Queen. Why would the Borg Queen in Episode 1 have a face covering? Because it's, it's Girardi. And they're trying to just ex- obscure Again, it this brings me back to DWJB. Doctor Who, Girardi Borg. From now on, because that's way too much of a goddamn mouthful, but I'm just going to call the Borg Queen. So to be clear, because there is a Borg Queen on the show. She's in the past with all the characters. That's the Borg Queen. The one in the future that like blew everything up, that's the that's DWJB. Gerardi, DWJB, sure. yeah. It's Gerardi. Doctor Who, Gerardi Borg. They may as well not even conceal it anymore. <laughs> DWJB. Because that's, that's who it is. They wouldn't have shrouded her if it wasn't her. I think I don't can't think of any other reason. And she says Picard's thing because he's going to tell her what his mom said. And what's with if it's not Picard's mom? What's with all the weird freaky flashbacks with Picard's mom? Okay, like I guess I know so they, they I guess they established that his dad was a bit of an asshole, right? And he didn't really get along with his brother either. But now it sounds like maybe somebody stabbed his mom to death or something. Like some horrible tragedy happened. I don't know. You did point out that 11, 12 year old Picard is kind of a little, a little pansy boy. As I say, Picard should be like dying to get to the stars. She's of the like, season. poof! All your fear is all gone. All your fear Picard. is gone. That was so. Is scary. that what Picard does when he's like sitting there on the bridge and he's like? Whoa. They're shooting at us, sir. What are we doing? He's like, flashes into Oof. his side. He goes, poof, all your fears, guys. He's like, all my fears gone. Let's get into it. Riker's like, what the hell? I don't like this version of Picard, dude. I like Picard and TNG. Authoritative. I believe there were interviews with uh, with um, Patrick Stewart ahead of the show, too, saying that he didn't want to come back and do it if he was playing the same character. So... He's Not with Will Wheaton, because Will Wheaton's a shell. Shots fired. What are they going to do? I don't know. With their millions of subscribers versus our, like, 40. Bring them. Uh, man, I don't want to... Well, whatever. You can help me. You've got... No moder- one likes... You no can one... moderate the comments if we get flamed, because no somebody gets mad. Crusher. He is still Wesley. I want to be like, He's damn it. Wesley. Damn it, Will... What has Will Wheaton done? Damn it, Wheaton. I mean, we haven't really done anything ourselves, but... I haven't watched any of his, like, after anyway, show. That's, that's... Have you watched any of the after show for Picard? No, because by the end of the show, I'm too pissed off to go. It, it, like, on, I have, here's the thing. I might get stuck into watching it by accident sometime after an episode if it kicked on. But it always starts playing Star oh, Trek God. Discovery. So I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Where's the remote? Somebody turn it off. Hurry, hurry, it hurry. It starts with the episode one of Discovery. <laughs> they look like, on and you're like, dude, I got to turn this shit off ASAP. So all the... This is going off the rails, but it is off the rails. We're already off the rails. The Klingons. The, so when that scene pops on with the Klingons and Discovery, I think of Azog the Defiler from The Hobbit. It's, all he does is just the new crappy Hobbit movies. Where he's like, all of his language just sounds like Ula Ula Ula. Yeah, yeah. There's like nothing to it. Um, I guess for Discovery they changed some of the Klingon language too, which is funny because they like were hand given like an entire complete language that they could use for the series that was like canonical to everything, and they're like, no. I'm gonna change this. Unless well, like Kurtzman doesn't give a shit. I know. Obvious. Obviously, they never watched Time Zero. Then that was the damn conclusion. Okay, I was basically like really upset, and I was like, "There's no way in hell that they watched this episode." And I feel like if I was like told like, hey, we're going to do a time travel series and we're going to bring back these characters and have them interact with each other and we're going to do this and that, 
I would like go read the wiki maybe for those characters and be like, oh, they met in the past and there's an episode. Let me go watch that episode. Right. Take, take me an hour and a half and give me all the context I know. So when they meet again, they can be like, hey, you're back again, Picard. Remember, I didn't expect to see you again until the 25th century or whatever. we hung out with Mark Twain and Jack London? That was pretty wild. Like, he, <laughs> you look so much older, though, man. Rough for rare. And he's like, oh, you look just the same, Guinan. Dude, well, they should have they should have deep faked Whoopi into it, a hundred percent, like legit. Like, I don't know why they would do what they did. Maybe, maybe it's is it because I, I feel like it couldn't have been due to any of her like controversy because they still kept the scene in. Well, it was filmed all way before that. That's what too. I'm saying. I'm like, I, I don't think there was any way to have that any impact of it. Not a, Nothing even, too, against the actress that played New Guinan. Yeah, she was fine. It just would have made more sense to have Guinan's fucking face on it. Well, and um, here's the thing, too. Um, I wouldn't have minded as much if she had acted like Guinan, but she's doing her own thing. And she's doing her own take of sad, angry Guinan, which is okay. Every character in the show is sad and angry now. But uh, right, it's, except for Seven of Nine. Exactly, see. it's a it, it's so <laughs> it's part for us. Everybody except for Seven, though. Well, Seven took places with Rafi when they went back in time, but like, <laughs> so it would make sense, you know what I mean? But honestly, dude, it's just I'm like over the car chases, and I'm ready for them to be. I would rather than them be like, hey, we got ten episodes this season of like action on earth i'd rather be like can we just do like seven episodes a season and get to season three in the end there's too much exposition it's just like let's get to the point here well and like a lot what of what doing? a lot of what happened in this episode right do the whole thing with Guinan, though probably the whole reason they changed it we talked a little bit about it was um that she probably if, if she remembered meeting Picard, she wouldn't have been all hostile. He would have walked in, right, to 10 forward. And she would have been like, hey, Picard, what's going on? Uh, I didn't expect to see you again until the 21st century. Uh, and he'd be like, we got sucked back in time to the past, thanks to Q. We're trying to prevent something from happening. She'd be like, all right, great. You know, we already did this once last time. I wasn't expecting to have to do it again and he's like yeah either was i because you can see i'm like much older now <laughs> and yeah i'm even a robot and then she could be like we don't have time for this let's go find the watcher and you could have been done with the scene in like three minutes instead of a whole episode or whatever to quote commander troy we don't have the time to argue about time nice <sighs> very appropriate it's like all they fucking do in this series is argue about time. Right? Waste time, dude. Get the goddamn plot on. I feel like I could have done with like 10 minutes less car chase at least. LAPD's finest. Yeah. How do they steal a car from a police station and no one chases How them? How do they fire off lasers and they'll be being like, what was that? I could have unlocked it easily, but that was my fan. All right, and you pointed out too, was that guy really the dude from Star Trek Four on the bus with the... Yep. And yeah, he, we didn't like, talk about that. He totally got like, uh, like, ca like Spock like traumatized him, but he never grew up because he's still that punk guy. Right, that was totally him. And it's like how many years later? Forty years later? When did that movie come out? Like eighties? Yeah, eighty cents so of thirty years. We'll be generous. Thirty-five years since he got abused by Spock on the bus and knocked out. And now he's all, and scared. Now he's all scared and like toad and like everything. Oh and, yeah, sorry. I'll turn my music down. Oh, okay, and he's a pathetic and sad. Even Seven was like, "Oh, I feel bad for like." I remember in that in Star Trek Four, he just straight like threw the bird to like Spock and Kirk. Yeah, he was just like, <laughs> yeah, Fuck threw you. the bird, and so like, <laughs> like I think Spock just uh, nerve pinched him, just right? Like, Done. And was, then everyone cheered. Yeah, everyone was like, yeah. But now we have to be nice to everyone. Yeah. So what do they? What do they think of Spock? The writers, I think. I'm curious. What do they think of that time frame? I don't, I don't care. I don't want it. Never mind. I'll you show already up. know what Discovery I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to Spock. talk about Discovery either. They think Spock is... Uh, dude, yeah. I was going to say, dude, that's no, such a... I don't, we're not we can't care. even 
we could even do Discovery episodes if we wanted to. Because it's unwatchable. We would be like... Angry. Well, everything we would say would, like, inst- and we're Dude, I, um, it would, like, instantly get us, like, canceled everywhere. And we're not, like, weirdos or anything. Pretty normal dudes, man. We're just pointing out stupid things. It's stupid. Star it. Trek's not supposed to be stupid. I even would be more fine with Star Wars being dumb, dude. I don't care if Star Wars is dumb. I want my Star Trek to be smart. Right. It's supposed to be smart science fiction. And I don't care if it's act like if it's active it, dude, I grew up on TNG like and learning all the moral lessons and everything. But they were good episodes and it was well done and it was like it made you think and you're like, oh, you know. This new stuff is just Rafi running around like punching people and lasering things and like let's zap everybody and berating and punishing present day society for you know from the high tower basically. Right. It's just uh, present day actors in the future, but the past commenting on. I had no idea. You know. I know, man. Out though. What else? Can we say anything else about this episode? We'll s- no. We'll I see like where it Hugh's goes. costuming when he was sitting at the, the Europa table. Europa project. Yeah, and like I like his white hair. I like old Hugh. He looks distinguished. I, I'm trying to think of some pros because we've been pretty conny. Con this episode. Cons. Con so many cons. What do you think's gonna happen with Q? Like, what do you think's wrong with Q? Right? Is he like, was he talking to himself about he's like having a performance anxiety? But it was like, it felt like he was like talking about like, oh, you tell him, but he can't and it won't work and everything. And then, but it seemed like he was genuinely surprised when he tried to snap. I don't know what the fuck that scene was all about. I don't either. Am I retarded? I'm sorry. I I used the R word, but am I like stupid? I have no idea. Am I stupid for like. I have no clue. Not understanding what was going on there. I guess I am. Well, I mean, the theme is because Picard pointed out, like, there's something wrong with you, Q. Right. But, like, I don't... There's been no exposition on to... We can expose... You know, we can we do, like, a 20-minute car chase, but we can't go into Explain why, the story! What's, what's wrong with Q? Dude, this was... This is, like, an hour-long episode, like, dragged out into ten... I feel like maybe I'm wrong. We better get like some understanding of what's happening next on the next episode. I don't think we're going to. Just more like dicking around. I told you, I think in the last one, I said we were going to be stuck on Earth until like the very end of episode nine. They're going to be like, I got the ship fixed. We're ready to go, guys. (laughs) And then episode 10 is literally going to be them returning to the ship, taking off, and getting home. Is, um, is and that's where they spent all their effects budget because then they took all the money they saved from this season and they made it for season three. And because the rumor, dude, was that really it was just it was really just two seasons, and they decided to like kind of break it up to make it a third season. I don't know. So maybe they'll return. I don't know, man. I'm glad you're watching it with me. I appreciate it. I the truth is, dude, I was thinking about because I was like, man, I wonder what they like think of when they look at the analytics on my like Paramount Plus account. They're like, this guy only watches Star Trek, nothing but Star Trek, and they're like, oh, and he literally stopped on Star Trek Discovery season one episode two. And he's watched the first minutes, like saying, ten minutes about twelve times. Right, yeah, like, uh, Lower Decks is, like, I've been working my way slowly through Lower Decks, and it makes me laugh sometimes, and sometimes I really hate it, but they've been doing cool stuff with ships, which I really like. I like seeing the goofy cartoon ships, and honestly, I've been ordering the Eagle Moss cartoon ships, and I I don't know if, like, the Eagle Moss pipeline to the comic shop right now is goofed up. I've been having trouble getting some of them. And so I'll just start ordering them on the website. But there's some cool ships in there coming up too. So um, we should definitely do some lower decks and some shuffle trek. But I would 100% fine, be like totally fine with cutting out Picard and Discovery from any shuffle trek. But we could also, if we were like wanted to be like masochistic, we could include them in. No, I can't. We do like hit shuffle and be like, da da da, and be like TNG. Discovery, oh. no, but we'd have to watch it. That'd be the rules. I'd make you do it. 
And I know you would probably refuse. So I maybe would. it's better we just not do it. I'd pull my rank. Rank? You captain can't pull rank on me. Seven over. You're just a bad moral. I'm a captain too, Bross. I'm like the crazy captain that's rogue. Yeah. Like the Pegasus. I'm like the... <laughs> The captain just pushes the boundaries within the system. <laughs> on that note. On that note, should we? Do we have anything else to say? Dude? I are don't. We, are we going to be back next week? May as well. We've we should. Far. We should just plow ahead, right? We've Let's gone do this it. Far. Maybe it'll redeem itself. Well, we can recuperate through shuffle track when we're done. Okay. Sounds good. I was going to say on that note, we do have mugs, Captain. 1701's got the TOS gold mug. I've got the uh, Captain's Red mug from TNG. You can order those on akbog.com. Remember, there is a monthly subscriber celebration giveaway. We'll give, uh, that's coming up in a week. And we've changed it. You now get a pick from the prize pool. We've had enough people not claim their prizes that I have a gigantic selection of prizes available. So if you want to win something, subscribe and tune in on the 31st. And as always, thank you for watching. Sign out. Let's go. See you later. Let's say, uh, what? Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so.